I'm Jason Tamaric. Invariably, at some point in your career, you're going to have to shoot your actor in a bathroom. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you some tips and techniques that you can use for lighting and shooting in a small bathroom like this. You know, shooting in a small room, especially a bathroom, provides a number of challenges, and this one is certainly no exception. The first one being that we have an entire wall full of mirrors and we've got to be really cognizant of how we deal with the reflections, not only of the light, but also of any equipment that we may see in the scene. Now, the second challenge we run into is low ceiling height. So I'm six foot three, so these are about seven foot ceilings, so pretty low. And this straight away is going to limit some of our options in terms of how we can position and rig lights overhead. So this is gonna really influence a lot of my uh, decisions. So before we get started, as is the case with every time we start a new scene, we have to begin by blocking out the action with the actor so we know what the action is before we can decide how we're going to cover it and light it. Okay, so in this scene, Lisa is going to be playing our character here. Hey, Lisa. All right, and so what we're gonna do is Lisa is going to uh, walk into the bathroom, just like so, and she's going to stop right here at this midpoint here between the two sinks at our vanity. And, you know, we don't have a whole lot of room here. Um, you know, even if I had a really wide angle lens, I'd, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to be able to see both Lisa and her reflection. And even if we did this, the challenge we run into is we can see this big space in the middle of the frame and it's a little awkward for us to frame this. So basically, camera's gonna start here and it's just gonna pull straight back and it's gonna track and match move with Lisa. So if we take a look at what our existing lighting is doing right now, we have um, thankfully uh, several tungsten bulbs up here, but I'm not gonna be actively using these because again, we don't have bulbs like this in most bathrooms. So we're gonna pretend as though these aren't here. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to set up a primary key light to create my base illumination on Lisa and get her skin tones properly exposed. Now the other challenge I have is what we're seeing back into the bedroom, both in our initial dolly pullback and once we settle into our second position. So in that case, we are gonna be seeing deeper into the back bedroom. So I'm gonna to have to light that uh, as well. So I think the first step here is going to be to set up the camera, choose the right lens, and get our frame. Now one thing is whenever you're moving the camera like this, always make sure that you have one hand firmly on the camera because sometimes this quick release, place can, uh, a quick release plate can be loose and you don't want to pick up your rig and have your camera slide off the tripod head. That is an expensive mistake that I guarantee you will only make once in your career. All right, so I've got my camera set up now and I have a 24 millimeter lens on and I'm gonna work out my camera move. So I've got about mm, maybe five, almost six feet to work with with my dolly. So I'm gonna try two different moves to see which one is most dynamic and most interesting for our scene. So I'm gonna start closest to the door. Just like so. Okay, and hey Lisa, let's just try a walkthrough. And so as you walk in, the camera's gonna dolly back. And then we find our frame. Now, the problem with this particular setup is that I'm not able to see her reflection. So what might be a more interesting move is if I actually start back here so we can see some of the door, which is really nice. And then we'll do a counter move, which means that I'll actually be dollying forward while Lisa walks in. So Lisa, could you go back to your one, please? Okay, so if I start back here, okay, Lisa, and go ahead and walk forward. Okay, yeah, I think that looks really nice. Now, if we take a look at this end frame and see what's happening here, I like how nice and wide this is. We're getting some really interesting um, breakups in the shot and we're almost, 
We have a really nice balanced frame because if you notice we've got the middle door threshold in the middle, we've got the room on the left which is balancing out Lisa uh, just right of frame and I think this is a really aesthetically pleasing shot. So I'm happy with this lens, I'm happy with this camera movement and I think we're ready to start lighting. All right, so let's take a look at how our light is going to be playing off of Lisa. Now, like I said before, we've got these really nice exposed bulbs up here, but it's creating a very broad, sloppy light. And you can see in the frame that it's illuminating everything from this wall back here, this wall here, and I don't have a whole lot of control because if you compare the brightness values between Lisa's skin tones, her skin tones are uh, almost a stop and a half darker than this back wall. So our audience's eye is being drawn to the hot spots rather than to Lisa's face. So what I'm gonna do is start out by turning off these lights and I'm gonna set up a, hmm, I think I'm gonna go with a uh, Ledgo Alta tube, probably a four footer, and I'm going to put a louver on it. So that way we'll get a nice strip of light, create a nice wrap around, and it's gonna be focused on Lisa to reduce and eliminate some of the spill off of the walls. Okay, now, the question that I have here is, do we like the focus and do we like what the light is doing? So if we take a look at our actual picture here, you can see that there's a much, much, uh, there's a huge improvement over what we had before with just the ambient light in the bathroom. See, it's much more focused and we're not getting as much spill on the background here that we were before. So your eye is definitely being drawn to Lisa's face. Now, the challenge with this is that it's a little too bright. We've got to finesse it to make sure that the focus is what we want because we do have to contend with this light here on the back wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, rotate this a little bit so it's a bit more of a toppy light. And whenever you tilt the light down, we call it wasting it down. You're basically wasting the light so 100% of the light is not focused on your subject. So I'm going to waste this light down a bit and straight away, you can now see now how focused the light is on Lisa. So her skin tones are really popping and there literally is no spill anywhere else in the bathroom. So this is a really great place to be. But I don't necessarily want this because I wouldn't mind seeing some of this light here on the back wall. So let me go ahead and open this back up just a little bit so we can see some light on the back. Okay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. That looks quite a bit more natural. Okay, so, so far so good. Now, the question here is what color temperature do I want my light to be set at? Obviously, this light is much warmer than the bluer light coming in from outside. So remember, it doesn't matter what the color temperature is to our eye. All that matters is what the camera sees. So I want this light to match the color temperature of the sunlight. Maybe make it just maybe a bit warmer let's see so i'm going to dial in my color temperature uh 5600 degrees kelvin and there we go you can see how it's matching but of course our scene is very very blue now my option is to come in and change the white balance of my camera so that the shot isn't overly blue so let me do that real quick here and there we have it so now our light is appearing as white but from an exposure standpoint, am I happy with how this looks? Well, if I take a look at my false color, Lisa's skin tones are already very, very warm because they're falling here in the yellow area. But um, the rest of the scene is a little too dark for my liking. So what I'm going to do is dial back the brightness of this key light so that her skin tones are falling right around 60 to 65 IRE. Right, so if I bring this down. Okay, that is looking very, very nice. And her skin tones are now properly exposed. All right, so if I switch off my um, false color mode, we can now see that this is looking much, much nicer. And if we compare this to what it looked like by, uh, with, with the ambient light, there's a huge difference and it already looks so much more cinematic. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and um, 
hold off on dialing in this key light because I do want to rough in some of the other lights. And I want to start with looking at what's happening back here inside this little cubby back here because this is falling pretty dark. And if you also notice, we're not getting a lot of separation between Lisa's hair and the background. So because I know that we're not going to be seeing this corner, this may be a perfect place for us to put um, a little like foot long uh, LED light fixture just to give us some return and maybe another one up here to give Lisa a bit of a hair light. So let's go ahead and set those up and see how it looks. So I've got these great little Nanlite 12 inch Pavo tubes and these are battery powered LEDs and we have just as much control over the light with these fixtures that we do with the larger ones. So we can control the brightness, the color temperature, a bunch of different effects. But the best part is that it's really easy to mount because these are magnetized. And the Pavo tubes all come with these little metal plates that you could just tape to a surface and then use the magnets in the Pavo tube to stick it. Okay, so I've got my two magnets. I've got uh, two magnets taped here for one of the Pavo tubes and another one up here. And this is gonna serve as Lisa's hair light. And I'm gonna take this guy and stick it back here. And you can already notice straight away just how nice this is filling in some of this void back here. So all of a sudden this isn't quite so dead and it's bringing it to life just a bit more. Now to deal with Lisa's hair light, I've got my second Pavo tube and I'm going to fire this guy up also. Again, setting it to 5600 Kelvin. And this guy, I'm going to set the brightness a little bit brighter. Uh, maybe to let's say 25%. And then this guy, I'm going to stick up here. There we go. And you can see the difference it makes. It's making a really nice edge light. So here, if I AB this, just, just watch what this is doing with Lisa's hair. So this is without the light. And then this is with the light. So very nice and subtle, but what it's also doing is it's also giving me a little bit of texture here on this back wall. So we're also getting a nice exposure. So, so far, if we take a look at our shot, I'm pretty happy so far with how this is looking. Now, the only thing that I want to do though, is I'm noticing that the light coming in from outside has a bit of a green hue to it. And it's a little too green compared to the blue color temperature that we're working with in here. So what I think I'm going to do is I want to cut back on the light outside and pipe in my own light so I know it's a guaranteed 5600 Kelvin. So I've got my uh, C-stand here and a 4x4 solid. Now ordinarily on a location uh, you could always set up duvetine outside the windows to block the windows. But because this window is so small and we've already got shutters that are controlling the, the spread, I could just use a four x four and this is going to really nicely just block off the light. Because again, remember, filmmaking is all about control. And if we were to be shooting the scene over the course of several hours, the position of the sun's going to change and you don't want to break the actor's momentum or the crew's momentum shooting the scene by having to stop in the middle of shooting just to set up a flag or flag off the light. So this way, I know that I'm blocking the light and I don't have to worry about any light spill during my day of shooting. So I'm just gonna back this guy right up here against the wall. And that is step number one of reducing our light. So let's just quickly take a look at what's happening here. So this is our set. And since my camera's shooting out this way, I basically just eliminated all of the light that's falling from this window. But I still have to worry about the light coming in from this window, because this is what's giving me the really, really strong green hue. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm actually gonna set up a four x four floppy outside the window, but then just leave enough of an opening that we could pipe through one of our lights to control the color temperature. So let's head outside and set up that floppy. So it's 11 o'clock in the morning and our sun is almost directly overhead. And I know using Sunseeker that the sun is going to be going this way as the day goes on. So if you notice what the sun's doing, 
Right now, it's high enough in the sky that our awning is casting a shadow and we're not getting any direct sunlight coming in through our window, which is a really good thing. So since the sun's going that way, we don't have to worry about any direct sunlight coming in and pinging our set. But the problem with this is that as the sun moves, the color temperature is generally much cooler in the shade than it is in direct sunlight. So this color temperature is much warmer than this color temperature. So that means that as the sun starts moving and the shade starts creeping over, we might get some reflection of a cooler color temperature light coming through the windows, which makes blocking it off even more important. So I'm going to set up my floppy here. And actually, I don't even think I need the, uh, I don't even need the, the floppy part of this. And I'm going to put it right here to block any spill. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and throw a sandbag there on the big leg. All right, so our rig is good, rig is secure. And I left enough room here so that we could take a light fixture. And I think I'm gonna set up a LEDGO D1200 and shoot it right in through the window to get our light. But let's go inside first to see what we want the light to do before we set it up outside. Our color temperatures are matching a bit more, but we're still getting some green spill. But I think that's gonna be okay. Now, this is still looking awfully flat back here. And especially when I start my camera and I pan it over for the very beginning of the shot, that's looking pretty boring. So what I think I wanna do is I'm going to set up a LEDGO D1200 coming in through the window and I want it to rake across the bed and eventually hit the lamp because this here is what we're seeing in the frame. So I think that if we stick it up high enough, probably mm, maybe seven feet up and rake it through, we should get a really nice pattern and that'll also help offset the green hue of the color temperature light coming in from outside. So let's go ahead and set that fixture up. Okay, here we go. Now, one of the challenges that we face in lighting and working with natural sunlight is that the sun is by far the brightest light source we know. And the challenge is that we need uh, man-made light sources that will compete in brightness so that we can get proper exposure. Now, this presents a challenge if ever you're shooting with, say, tungsten light, because tungsten light, which normally has a warmer 3200 Kelvin color temperature, is going to be much, much warmer. And if you wanna match the color temperatures to sunlight, you're going to have to add a blue gel to convert that 3200 Kelvin light to 5600 Kelvin daylight. But a CTB is going to reduce the brightness output of a light source by two f-stops or by 75%. So literally, you're only getting 25% of the brightness by putting a blue gel over a tungsten light. And that ain't gonna cut it, especially when you're dealing with competing with the sun. So that's why I always prefer to use either HMIs or LEDs like the LEDGO D1200, which both have a native color temperature of 12 uh, of um, 5600 Kelvin. All right, guys, could we uh, run power to this, please? Okay, so let's see how our light is working. Um, and actually, I literally just set it up and I really like what this is doing. If you take a look at this pattern back here in our frame, this is giving us a real, real nice broken up pattern thanks to the blinds and the shutters. So we've got our nice diagonal light. It looks like um, a morning and we have a nice breakup on an otherwise solid white wall. So I think this is looking pretty good. So let's actually do a walkthrough right now with Lisa to see how all of our lights are playing together. And then we'll make a few tweaks if we need to. And Action. Everything so far is looking pretty good to me. The only thing I think I want to tweak here is I'm looking at my frame and I would like a little bit more separation right over here. So I might brighten up this other room just a bit so that we get a little bit more separation and all this doesn't blend together quite as much as it is. So let's just set up one more fixture and I think we'll be ready to roll a take.
and we have a uh, Ledgo four foot Alta tube. And take a look at what it's doing. It's definitely illuminating the background and bringing that up in exposure, but it's a little too broad and too sloppy of a light. So, hey, Jeremy, do me a favor. Walk it lamp forward a good probably three feet. And then let's waste it lamp left. Keep going, keep going. There we go, right there. Okay, yeah, that makes a really, really nice difference because you can certainly see in the frame, it's bringing that room to life. And it makes a lot of sense, especially when I'm in my very first position here and we can see the sunlight coming in through the window. So as our camera dollies forward and it comes around, that little bit of light back there in the back room makes it feel like she's coming out of a sunlit room. So I'm happy with that. So we've got our fixtures in place. I think we're ready to shoot a take. All right, so there we have it. That is how we shoot a bathroom scene. So let's just go and review how I lit this and what light fixtures I used. So for Lisa's key light, I have a Ledgo Altitude four footer with a little louver on here just to focus the light directly under her face and eliminate any spill on the back wall. Then I have two 12 inch Pavo tubes that are connected here using magnets. And the first is creating a hair light for Lisa. And the second one is just filling in some of the shadows back here in this little cove. Now, if we take a look out here, I have a Ledgo D1200 shining in from the outside. That's creating a really, really nice rake of light across the background. And I have another Ledgo Alta tube here that is a four footer. And this guy is giving us just a little bit of an ambience here in the back room. So when our camera comes back around, it still looks like there's sunlight pouring in. So everything is color graded to 5600 Kelvin and we have a beautiful look. So let's take a look now at what our shot looks like before we started to light. And now let's take a look at how everything looks afterwards. All right, so there we have it. So with a little ingenuity, some really good tools and excellent technique, you can create a really good cinematic look even in a small, tiny room like a bathroom. All right, guys, there you have it. A few techniques to help you improve your film skills. Now, if you really want to improve the quality of your productions, I'll take you much deeper into the entire filmmaking process in the paid course at Film Skills Unlimited, where I partnered with Airy, Audio-Technica, Panavision, Matthew Studio Equipment, Ledgo, and Kinoflow to produce an online training curriculum so complete that over 115 film schools, universities, and film commissions use my program. Plus, I sat down with over 70 Academy Award and Emmy-winning filmmakers who reveal the techniques they use to produce the biggest TV shows and movies ever made. So join over 20,000 filmmakers and learn how to write better screenplays, become a more effective director on set, master advanced cinematography techniques, unlock the full capabilities of your camera and lens, improve your shots with Hollywood lighting techniques, learn how to record audio, design sets, edit, and much more. 
And as a special bonus, I've also negotiated special discounts on software and gear just for Film Skills members. And as a member, you also have exclusive access to hundreds of projects and exercises to practice and hone your skills. Plus, nearly 2,000 pages of my illustrated companion guides, personal mentoring, job shadows, and much more. So check out filmskills.com for more information. And by the way, you're also invited to join my free one-hour filmmaking course, where I share my top 10 secrets to achieving a professional look that helped me grow a career shooting in over 35 countries for top studios and brands. So check out the link below to register for my free one-hour filmmaking course and learn how to become a better filmmaker at Film Skills, the online film school built by filmmakers for filmmakers.